Now, the second major area that evolutionists say point to macroevolution is similarities in structure, called homology, and DNA, that these are common evidences of a common ancestor. I should say these are evidences of a common ancestor. And we'll start with DNA first, and we'll go to our friend Richard Dawkins, author of The God Delusion, the most popular atheist in the world today. Richard Dawkins was asked by Philip Johnson, the man who wrote the groundbreaking book about 20 years ago called Darwin on Trial. Johnson was an attorney at UCAL Berserkley. He wasn't a biologist. But he pointed out that the problems with macroevolution are logical. They're not evidentiary. We look at the evidence for macroevolution, and then we have to make a interpretation. And he noticed that many of the philosophical assumptions and much of the reasoning processes that Darwinists were using to back up their theory were faulty. And so he wrote the book, saying this does not appear as it seems because these basic interpretation errors are being made, and these basic reasoning errors are being made by the Darwinists. So he wrote Dawkins, and he said, hey, Dr. Dawkins, what's your best evidence for macroevolution? Just, just bo bottom line me, if you will. And here's what Dawkins wrote back. The reason we know for certain that we are all related, including bacteria, is the universality of the genetic code and other biochemical fundamentals. What's he basically saying? He's saying, look, man, we all have DNA. And you've heard the story before, right? Depending on how you look at DNA, DNA similarity is about 96% between apes and humans, although that's controversial now. But it's also about 90% between mice and humans. And the closer you get to humanity with apes or chimpanzees or primates, you appear to have DNA most similar, similar to humanity. And this is supposed to show that we have a common ancestor. It's quite possible Dawkins is right. What does science tell us? Science tells us we have a common genetic code. What do we have to do as scientists? We have to take that data and interpret it and try and figure out what's the best explanation for why we have a common genetic code. Is one possibility we have a common ancestor? Yeah, Dawkins could be right. What's the other possibility he's not even thinking of? Anyone? We have a common creator. DNA similarity could be evidence of a common designer or creator rather than a common ancestor. Similar structures often have a similar blueprint. Why? I mean, what would the evidence have to look like at the DNA level for Dawkins to say, well, we're not ancestrally related? Would the DNA have to be 50%? Would it have to be 25% similar? I mean, it seems arbitrary to what he's saying here. We simply don't know. But you know what? Dawkins has already ruled out the only other possibility from natural causes. What's the other possibility for a natural cause? It's an intelligent cause, right? A non-natural cause. Dawkins has philosophically ruled that out before he's, looked at that, he's, he's even looked at the evidence, which means what? The only conclusion he can come to is it's got to be a natural cause. Evolution must be true. Again, this is a matter of interpreting the evidence. Do you know what? Similarity is not the problem for Darwinists. It seems to me that Darwinists must explain the vast dissimilarity between living things. The bee, the octopus, the Venus flytrap, mildew, the peacock, the porcupine, the human are all related according to Darwinists. How did we get this great diversity of life without intelligence? Where did this come from? I think you have to have more faith, interpreting the evidence as I look at it, you have to have more faith to believe that there's no intelligence behind all this. Do you know that you are supposed to be related to the mildew on your shower floor? According to Darwinism. Do you know, and this isn't often talked about because Darwinists have no real idea of how this could occur, but we're related to plants too. They never talk about plant evolution, but they think all life is the result of some natural process. I think you have to have more faith to believe that than just to believe there's intelligence out there. Now, let me show you one other thing. Remember, I just put this quote up here from Dawkins. Do you want to see the entire quote? Look at this. The reason we know for certain we are all related, including bac bacteria, is the universality of genetic code and other biochemical fundamentals. Here's the remainder of the quote. My philosophical commitment to materialism and reductionism is true but I would prefer to characterize it as a philosophical commitment to a real explanation 
as opposed to a complete lack of an explanation, which is what you espouse, talking to Philip Johnson again. In other words, Dawkins is admitting he is philosophically committed to naturalism. He's philosophically committed to only one possibility. He has ruled out the only other possibility. He's put on the red glasses and wonders why everything looks red. Well, look, man, if you're not open to the only other possibility, that's a philosophical conclusion, not one based on the evidence. Notice the intelligent design people are saying it could be a natural cause. It could also be an intelligent cause. Why don't we follow the evidence where it leads? In fact, if you look at this, what Dawkins is doing, he's ruling out intelligence beforehand. He's begging the question. He's assuming what he's trying to prove. In fact, this is called circular reasoning. 